question about your session management, first and foremost, is there, is this different than how you would normally have a session set up, or is this kind of your typical? No, this, this is kind of the setup. Kind of your setup. Okay. So a couple things real quick. Anybody out there who's saying, how come nothing is written out on the console strip? How come nothing is written out on the console scribble strip? It's because I've been mixing records for a very long time and everything always lives in the same spot. Bass drum's always on channel nine, snare drum's always on channel 10, the bass is always on channel 15, my main guitars are on 17, 18, basically 17 to 24 here. My meat and potatoes are right here, right in this area that I sit in. So that would be guitars and vocals. My lead vocal's always on 25. So I don't need to have to write the stuff out, not to mention the fact that you see, I can just scroll through my session, and the way that I have my session set, I'm going to just enlarge it. I, look, I'm so used to running in this view. Old habits die hard. You know, that when I put it in this view, I lose a lot of real estate, okay? Because now I can only look at, you know, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine channels on my screen. I can only see nine channels at a time, as opposed to when I'm looking at this view, the small view, now I can see, if we count it, one, two, whatever it is, it's, it's, it's double the amount. But for, for, for you guys out there, I'm just going to enlarge it. So let's talk about setting yourself up for mixing for success, setting your mix up for success. Session management, you know, for me, I try to manage all this. I try to keep everything written very simply. You know, tell me what it is, where it plays. You know, bridge guitar, chorus guitars, guitar theme. I don't even have to tell you guys what the guitar theme is. You all know what the guitar theme is, okay? Verse guitar, outro lead guitar, bridge arpeggiation guitar, okay? How do I know it's a guitar? Because it's living in the area of guitars, okay? Intro Moog, very simple. You also notice I can immediately look at my outputs, okay? So the way that I have my session set up is via outputs, okay? So my percussion tracks, okay? This is my bass drum and snare drum gate trigger track, which we're gonna get into later. So starting from left to right on my console, one, two, three, and four are my percussion channels. If there's more percussion, then it would go to the far right side of my console. Okay, but I would still have it living at the top of my session. But I try to have my session go in chronological order from low numbers to high numbers. Okay, so you can see tambourine, one and two. Rock box, one and two. Okay, then there's some, the REO big foot. Boom. And we're going to get into why, again, why you see these channels here, I'm going to highlight them. Why you see these, and they weren't in your session, and I'm going to tell you why, okay? But they are in your session, just not like this, okay? And then, as, again, as you can see, you also see the AMS drum verb. And again, well, I didn't get the AMS drum verb in my session. Well, you didn't get it in your session because it wasn't given to me with the multi-track. When I mixed this song, I only had one AMS digital reverb, and in this particular song, I wanted to have the, um, there's a setting called ambience, which is really good for snare bombs and stuff like that. I wanted to have that on the tom-tom in, in, the, in the chorus sections, and I needed to print it, so I had printed it, okay? And this way, I was able to use the AMS digital reverb for something else in the mix. But yes, so as we go down, you can see everything is labeled very, it's very simple to look at. And when I am using something that's going through a group or a bus, again, look at this. In, out, guitar, sub. If I highlight this, that's the intro, outro, guitar, sub going out of bus 55 and 56. So when I have it in this view, which I'm normally looking at, it's really easy to see. So you can see the difference between output 17 and 18, okay? If I switch here, let's take this channel here. If I take this and switch this to bus 15, okay? 
it changes. It's very easy to see, okay? As opposed to me calling this channel in out guitar sub in other words naming the bus that okay we only have so much real estate here so by keeping it numbers it allows you to utilize the real estate and then not have to figure out the hieroglyphics of what pro tools has to subtract all the additional letters to so i get sessions all the all the time guys that have created sessions from templates that have all their, their, you know, vocal echo, vocal echo two, vocal, blah, vocal spread, vocal blah, blah, blah. All their buses are named stuff. Half of them aren't being used. And it becomes a real horror story to figure it out. Okay? It may work for you guys. It doesn't work for me. So you just want to be able to look and know without thinking. Look, mixing is about being creative. It's about being creative. I can't fucking be thinking about this yeah. shit. It's, it's like, it's like, how can you manage your mix if you can't manage your session? Okay, so I'm trying to make the session for me. Look, let's call a spade a spade, man. I didn't even graduate high school. Okay, I'm not the brightest cat. Okay, so I've learned over years of using Pro Tools <laughs> how to drop wireless mic packs without them making a huge bang. <laughs> Takes a licking and keeps on ticking. Um, for me, it's about, you know, I use the term setting your mix up, setting your session up for success, navigating your session, 